Okay, the name of this video is Monty Cures <clears throat> Heart Failure, all right? So here's a chest x-ray with heart failure. The heart is big and the lungs are wet. There's a lot of fluid. This is congestive heart failure. Big heart, wet lungs, okay? So the heart is wider than half of the cardiothoracic ratio. That's the definition of cardiomegaly. The pulmonary arteries are as big <clears throat> going to the upper lobes as they are to the lower lobes. That's called cephalization. They're heading upward because of all the back pressure. Pleural effusion, there's fluid here and the horizontal fissure th causing thickening. Um, there's increased thickness of the pulmonary vascular markings. There's these little linear lines going out to the chest wall. Those are called curly B lines after an Irish radiologist. I figured that out. You can see all these linear lines. It's another sign of fluid filling up in the lymphatics. Fluid overload of the lungs due to back pressure because <clears throat> the left ventricle is not pumping adequately. Okay, so that's your standard congestive heart failure. And the person's always already had a previous sternotomy. You can see these uh, cerclage wires around the sternum. This is a classic chest x-ray appearance of congestive heart failure. Okay, so usually all they do is give a whole bunch of medicines. They never cure the patient, all right? So here's a normal heart, a normal left ventricle. It's normally a little bit bigger than the right ventricle. It has to contract at a higher pressure. With congestive heart failure, you've often got a chronic thickened hypertrophy left ventricle, and let's say chronic hypertension, as well as other factors causing thickening of the blood. Smaller chamber, it doesn't fill as well, and it's not able to get the blood around the circuit as well. So it leads to decreased perfusion of the brain, other parts of the body, and there's a lot of things that start happening in the... In this. Okay, so now here's Monty, okay? This is Baxter Montgomery. He is a cardiologist, and he published a paper here where he put, oh, let me slide this paper over. He put three patients on a plant-based diet, and their ejection fraction increased on average from 22% to 42%. So it basically about double. That's magnificent results. And this all occurred in 2.7 months, less than three months. Okay, so you know, you got to get to these patients pretty fast because they have a 50% five year mortality. Okay, they got a bigger chance of dying than most cancers. Okay, so he's basically saving their lives by putting them on a plant based diet. And what's so extraordinary about this is, you know, I, I did my fellowship at Harvard with all these Rico Suave cardiologists walking around fast talking, articulate, and smooth. They never cure any patients, zero, okay? This guy just cured, you know, three patients, okay? That's amazing. This is what patients want. This is what patients need. They don't need Rico Suave talking about the latest drug for, you know, $50,000, okay? They need, how can they open up their arteries and get their heart to pump again? All right, so that's pretty extraordinary. You know, cardiac output improve, stroke volume improve. There was less uh, ventricular hypertrophy. Uh, one patient had... Uh, reversal of a 90 to 95% stenosis in the ostium of the left anterior descending. I'll show you the cardiac cath for that. They all reported a uh, decrease in angina, you know, uh, dyspnea on exertion, shortness of breath in general, fatigue. Okay, so Monty cures heart failure. That's his big, big news here. Okay, here's a patient from Dr. Montgomery's um, uh, patients who, one of them underwent a cardiac cath. This is the, the journal the article's in. So on this preliminary cardiac cath, this is before treatment, the left main coronary artery is diffusely small in diameter. Here's the left anterior descending coronary artery. And right at its beginning, it's called its ostium, there's a severe narrowing there. They call it 95%. I would call it more like about 85% to 90%. It's still a tight stenosis. Okay, tough place to put a stent in. The stent's going to sort of bridge over this other branch. Not a great spot. It reopened, okay? Uh, so I'm just showing you. This is a cardiac cath, also called a coronary angiogram and you have cured an atherosclerotic stenosis. That's an extraordinary thing. People didn't used to think that that was possible. Okay, now here's another guy. Uh, this is Robert Ostfeld, and he also published um, a reversal of congestive heart failure uh, with a plant-based diet. This was published in 2017. Let me see when Montes was published. So Montes was published in 2019, okay? Um, so Ostfeld, he had a patient with congestive heart failure, dyspnea on exertion. Um, he then uh, had three vessel coronary artery disease, had an injection fraction of 35%. Patient went vegan for six weeks and the injection fraction uh, improved to 50%. So these are extraordinary results. Uh, these people, their lives are being turned around, you know. They are, 
This is a big deal, okay? He, he actually published another one. I'm gonna show you that one. This was a patient who was told to undergo coronary artery bypass graft and aortic valve replacement. He said, well, I'm gonna try the diet first. So he went on the diet and uh, he got better. So they got rid of all animal foods and they gave him all plant foods and he got better. A lot of vegetables, fruits, whole grains, potatoes, legumes. And they also did give him nuts. I wouldn't have done that, but they did. His cholesterol dramatically dropped from 201 down to 137. Triglycerides dropped from 112 to 96. He lost 18 pounds. Okay, so Osfeld then, uh, oh, I got, an, I got another case from Osfeld, but I guess I had this other slide. This one popped in between. So this is Walter Kempner. And Walter Kempner, you know, back in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, this patient was 1969, he was curing patients of congestive heart failure. Big heart, okay, and it went from being 17.5 centimeters in diameter to being 14 centimeters in diameter. The patient's body weight dropped quite a bit too. The patient started out weighing 400 pounds, got down to 220 pounds. Blood pressure went down from 200 over 130 down to 130 over 86. Uh, blood glucose, fasting blood glucose went from 248 to 91. Extraordinary numbers, okay? This is just in, you know, less than one year. So Kempner showed that this was this was possible. Kempner had a whole bunch of patients that reversed their AKG, EKGs with his rice diet, okay? Dr. McDougal saw patients' coronary artery stenosis regress with uh, his vegan diet. Uh, Nathan Pritikin saw patients' coronary artery disease regress in himself and in his patients on cardiac cath. Okay, Dean Ornish showed regression in coronary artery disease adopting a vegetarian diet, okay? So it's important to know that this is possible. This is incredible. Okay, so here's a paper. This is a paper by David Blankenhorn, and he was a real good atherosclerosis researcher. I don't have the paper I want to find, though, from him. This one just shows atherosclerosis, therefore, appears best influenced by lipid lowering. The more you lower your lipids, the better the patients do. I have another paper by him. I got to find it where he showed a whole bunch of patients eating all the different types of fat, the MUFAs, the PUFAs, the sat fat. And um, it didn't matter what type the fat was, olive oil, omega-3, omega-6, all the fats caused more atherosclerosis. You had to reduce all of them. And the same thing in primate studies, Armstrong redu reversed atherosclerosis in primates by lowering dietary fat. It's pretty well known. We know that Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, you know, he wrote this great book here, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. Uh, masterpiece. He's got a lot of lectures online of this. And here's one example. He's sort of a cardiac cath, left anterior descending coronary artery, sort of a ratty looking long segment stenosis. Um, and then the patient went on 32 months plant based diet. It, it came back to normal. Okay. Um, so here's a cardiac PET scan, and this area normalizes its perfusion. Okay. So it's rather extraordinary. So that means other people could hope for that. Another thing I like about S is in, he tells the truth. He doesn't BS. He says, you know, you got to be biblical. Thou shalt not eat oil. Thou shalt not eat animal foods. No oil, not one drop. That's what gets people better. What people don't understand is they're, they're already, you know, half to three quarters screwed with their arteries plugging up. They're, they're at high risk for an irreversible event, big myocardial infarction or stroke. So don't mess around. Like Esselstyn says, don't take a thimbleful. Don't take anything that's going to promote atherosclerosis. Those are the people who go all out. They're the ones that get dramatic recoveries. Okay, I've, I've shown this chart before. And basically, when you eat the American diet, it's a high-fat diet. And that's the main way to separate diets, high-fat versus low-fat. The high-fat diet of the American diet, uh, they get tons of myocardial infarction. You know, atherosclerosis in the coronaries is the most common reason they die. Okay, the... Um, the patients in like Japan, Korea, China, where they ate a lot of white rice, which is only 1% of calories from fat, they didn't get that much atherosclerosis in the coronaries, okay? What got them in trouble is they're smoking like chimneys, um, and that causes hypertension, tissue ischemia. And then they were also, ischemia means lack of blood flow, they were also eating tons of sodium, 12 to 14 grams a day. That caused a lot of hypertension, so they would get strokes from their hypertension. They also ate a lot of vegetables, but uh, they had dramatically lower cancer than, let's say, an American who would smoke the same amount because the Americans combining with a high-fat diet synergistic to cause more cancer. Um, then the next thing is the South Asians, the Indians. And they what gets them into trouble, they have a little bit of dairy, you know, some ghee and some yogurt, so some sat fat, but the big thing that gets them in trouble is too much omega-6, way too much fried food. And that causes a lot of diabetes, a uh, Yamashima theory of diabetes, um, they also then are prone to other vascular problems, uh, including hypertension, heart attack, and uh, other atherosclerosis problems. And then how do you win the game? Low fat, low sodium, 
100% uh, vegan. Okay, and um, you know, it's pretty obvious. It's pretty obvious. You just take a look at the vegans, you know. Like I said, I'm 60 years old, and I can tell you, you know, people routinely think I'm uh, I'm about 45 years old, and uh, I even had a resident, maybe she's just trying to be nice, lying to me, guess that I was 40. She's probably lying just to be nice. Uh, but I, I, it wasn't like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm her doctor or anything. It was just conversation with some of my friends. Okay, so anyways, what I'm trying to say, it's obvious, because I know all these doctors, all the doctors that are eating the Western diet, they're all fat and sick with atherosclerosis, diabetes, prediabetes, all that stuff, the tired look on their face. Okay, here's another paper by Ostfeld. This is with a lady patient. Another case report of a reversal of congestive heart failure. Okay, um, let's see if they got her ejection fraction in here. Um, okay, her hemoglobin A1C, her, her, she then developed a normal ejection fraction of 55%. Oh, she started out with an ejection fraction of 25%, and it went up to 55%, totally normal, okay? And what did they do for her diet? They got rid of all the animal foods, and instead they put her on all plant foods. They did allow her to eat nuts and seeds, which, again, I wouldn't have done, and also some hemp seeds, chia seeds, or flax. I wouldn't have done that, but they did, but just so you know, and for the sake of full disclosure, we'll mention that. Her BMI dropped from 45, so she was really fat, down to 35, which is still fat, but not so bad. Her A1C went from, frankly, diabetic at 8.1 down to just, you know, sort of mildly pre-diabetic at 5.7. Big increase in ejection fraction from 25% to 55%. This is the patient at Osil, the lady patient. So anyways, what I'm trying to say is this is extraordinary. These are people being cured with a plant-based diet. And, you know, if you talk to any fancy doc at an Ivy League place or some other big name university, they would tell you this is impossible. No, here you go. Here's a three case reports from uh, Baxter Montgomery, two patients from um, uh, Dr. Osville, and you can bet there's tons more, a whole bunch more from Kempner, et cetera. So this is out there. You know, gradually more research will trickle in, but this is big stuff.